oh, 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 well, 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 welcome to another episode of the In Search SEO Podcast, where we cut into more SEO insights than an overzealous brain surgeon. Today, joining us is the world-renowned, the famous Lukasz Zelezny, who comes on to discuss why organic search is stronger than ever. You hear that, SERP features? Organically building your brand and what still works on social media without you having to pay for it. I am your host, Morty Oberstein, and I am joined by the reliably reliable, the sensibly sensible Kim Ragones. Good morning, Morty. How are you today? I'm okay. How are you? Great. Better than ever. We have a guest today on the show who's not talking. Right. Kim's daughter is in studio because she's sec- sick. My secretary. It's, it, if you, it could be your sick Rotary because she's sick. Yes. Get it? Oh, I what a it. great joke. Before we continue, let me remind you that we put out a new episode of the In Search SEO podcast each and every Tuesday. You can find it on the Rank Ranger blog. You can find it on SoundCloud. You can find it on Stitcher, on Spotify. And of course, you can subscribe on iTunes. Please subscribe on iTunes. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, before we get into all things organic, into the state of all things organic with Lucas Zelesny, and in light of the recent talk about the rank brain and neural matching and so forth, let's take a look at how it all impacts keyword research as we go in-house for the second week in a row. Okay, I want to sort of set the record straight here. Google's AI and machine learning, whatever you want to call it, it's more machine learning than AI, whatever, okay, go well beyond rank brain. It's a drum I have been banging on for a while now. Uh, It also goes beyond neural matching. How do I know? Well, because Danny Sullivan talked about topic layers when he announced some of the 20th anniversary updates a few months ago. I personally think there's more than these three, just these three. And why so? Uh, because it's so hard to pinpoint, because it's so hard to see each element at work. In other words, everything is so nuanced. It's beyond nuanced. The way Google understands intent seems so diverse, so nuanced, so dependent on the circumstance. The nature of the query, the nature of the language used, the nature of the entity, and so forth, that there seems to be a whole wide array of AI elements at play. And that rhymes. I just made that up. That's awesome. Okay. (laughs) Also, I'm a poet. You know that? No. Right. Yeah, me neither. Also... (laughs) I used to write poetry, actually. Really? Yeah, for real. So bring no. it next time. No, on the show. that's for that's Morty time. Uh, also, <laughs> when was when was the last time Google showed you their entire hand? Okay, so if they're admitting there are these three elements, there's probably three hundred we don't know about. You're talking poker. I'm talking Google poker. <laughs> <laughs> so you're probably wondering how all this relates to keyword research. How did you know that? Because I wrote into the script. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> that will do it. That'll do it. I just broke the fourth wall. Okay, here we go. So from time immemorial, which I always mess that word up, but I got it right. Okay, keyword research has been about why well, about finding the most advantageous keyword from the competitive perspective, from the maximum search volume perspective. Everyone's been on the hunt for high search volume keywords when and where you could, of course, compete. However, with the advent of search as a journey or uh, Google being a discovery engine, whatever in the world you want to call it, however you want to phrase it, okay, playing the keyword search volume game is like trying to catch a whale with a string. Uh, like a thin string, not a thick string. You that would be a rope a already. With a string. And thick that's. One. Is that personal experience from Sweden? <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't hunt, wait. We don't do that. You don't hunt whales? You know, well, okay, that's good because that's, that's a bad thing to do. Save the whales. Yeah, that was a big thing when I was growing save up. Them. Save the whales. Star Trek Four. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Where was I? Okay, okay, okay. So you have this whole thing of search journey, right? Search discovery. Okay, what I'm focusing on in this particular moment are the topic layers that I referenced a few moments ago. Okay, Google talked about this and all the rest that goes into Google understanding who and what an entity is on a new qualitative level, as well as knowing what fits and what doesn't fit within the concept, because that changes everything. Those the topic layers, how Google goes about understanding an entity, how Google goes about um, deciphering what relates to what doesn't relate to an entity via the topic layer, and perhaps many, many un- undisclosed AI elements changes everything. Okay, we as SEOs, okay, we look at search very, very, very monolithically. Okay, it's star- okay, and that's starting to change a bit, which is good, but we're not there yet. What do I mean by this? Okay, so we see a user and a search. We see the same user and the next search. We see the same user and the next search. We see the same user and? The next search. And the next search. You get the point. Yes. That could go on. Should I? No, um, probably not a good idea. No? Um, you sure? Yes. Okay, that's it. Final answer. That's it. Okay. I won't go. And they see the user and the next search. I did it anyway. Okay, sorry. I couldn't help myself. 
<laughs> okay, Google does not look at search this way. And Google says that users view search almost like a pastime in a way, as something to do, as something to become engrossed in. I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. You do. Okay, have you ever just sat down with nothing better to do or perhaps something better to do that you want to escape from? There's and always something to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. Laundry. Uh, <laughs> that you want to escape from. Yes. Right, I get that. <laughs> I'm a laundry guy at home. I, I, I feel you. I don't like doing laundry. But no. it's better than washing dishes. That's, that's my wife. That's our split. Good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. I hate doing dishes. Anyway. Um, okay. So you sit, you sit down. You nothing better to do. You do one search after the next search after the next search. You go and look at this. You go back and look at that. You go and look at this because you're just trying to kill time or you get clued into something. You get hung up on something. You find something really, really interesting. You just keep going and going and going with more and more searches. Did that ever happen to you? Well, I don't search so much on Google per se, mostly on Amazon or YouTube. So I guess I don't get you don't get the, the whole manipulated oh, no, no, no. the same way. But no, YouTube is exactly what I'm talking about. Actually, that's great. Actually, oh. okay, you know, you you watch a video on YouTube and you watch the next one, and the next one, and the next one. You just like stuck in right three hours pass by. You know what happened? Where are my kids? And why is a house on fire? <laughs> right, literally. Almost. We're almost right. But okay? also on Amazon. All right, same, you know, same thing. Right, you just right keep going. At the bottom. Okay, that's true. exactly what I'm talking about, but an actual Google search, yes. okay? So search is not monolithic, okay? I would say, and I very much believe that Google agrees, okay? That search is more aligned to what I just described to what you may more um, think about as being a YouTube search, okay? That it is about isolated search events. Okay, so if we go with this for a second, okay, then Google offering you what you want for a specific search without trying to guide you to the next logical search or that offering a segue to continue um, down to another search path or if you want to call it, that would be silly if you didn't do that. Totally unaligned to how the user operates, okay? To what the user latently expects. So what does Google do? Search as a journey, okay? They, they use all sorts of a bag of tricks. I don't mean it in a bad way, okay? Uh, to, to push content avenues in front of your eyes, okay, in front of the user, so as to make, and, and okay, this just makes so much sense, okay, Google sees search as being this dynamic, involved process, then it's going to want to offer you dynamic and involved search options, okay, thus, okay, now, okay, wait a second, one second, okay, so now, Okay, now here you are basing your content generation off keyword research that's totally focused on, on high volume, low competitive keywords. Okay, that's monolithic, my friend. That is not how Google sees search. It's not how Google's about content placement on the SERP. It's about as relevant as stuffing keywords to be very, very hyperbolic about it. I know, I'm just, I'm trying to get your attention to make a point. Okay, thus, the keyword research process should delve into the full spectrum of whatever topic you're dealing with much the way that Google does when showing results on the SERP. It's only logical, okay? In the post we just put out on the Rank Ranger blog, which I'm plugging, that's fine. Um, the example I used was for a keyword related to mutual funds. Okay, so now you could do your normal keyword research and you would find all sorts of high volume, high traffic volume keywords related to mutual funds and create a super high volume keyword list of super traffic deliverers related to mutual funds or you could do research by using a tool like our, like Rank Rangers Keyword Research Suite, <coughs> cough, cough, um, to pull in uh, keywords from features like the PAA box, people also ask box, the related searches, in order to get a broader and more holistic view of the topic. Okay, in the case of mutual funds, um, which is what I, <coughs> cough, which is what I was searching for when I, when I did my post, that meant subtopics related to mutual funds, like is mutual, are mutual funds a safe investment? Are they not a safe investment? How, how lucrative are mutual funds? What are the tax implications of mutual funds? Which, by the way, was a big question that people have, which I never would have guessed. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah people like to know about their taxes. Okay. If you were to go just high search volume, what would happen? You might entirely focus on one of those topics and totally ignore the other two, which is the problem. Okay, you would miss out on any of the content exploration opportunities Google's putting in front of the user. In other words, you will not pass go, you will not collect $200 because you will not continue on the user's search journey. Keyword research for 2019, there it is, that you have it. See the full post on the Rank Ranger blog by yours truly. <sighs> I'm done. Okay, so yeah. now there's a perfect time to announce the share of your SEO tip of the week. No? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it, okay? Um, by the way, in, in words of the great Arnold, Arnold Horshack from Mr. Cotter, right you are, Miss Ragones. <laughs> okay. 
I'm not going to do you. the ooh, ooh, ooh thing. Most of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Google, welcome back, Otter. <laughs> okay. So what is the most important piece of keyword research advice 2019? Yep. Give us one juicy tip, one piece of advice that makes all the difference for keyword research in 2019. We will share the share your tip of the week, your SEO tip of the week on Twitter. We'll put it on LinkedIn. We'll put it out here. We'll put it out there. But it will also be available for you on the Rank Ranger blog that hosts this podcast. And there will be a Google form there where you can submit your answer in case you want to submit it anonymously. You could do that. Huh? Yeah, sounds like a good deal. Go for it. We would appreciate it very, very much. By the way, um, before we go on, let's take a look back at last week's SEO tip share. Please um, what, see what you guys share with us. But what was the question? If you could remind us, please, Kim. Sure, since you said please. I always say please. Yes. Thank last you. Last week, You're welcome. <laughs> you shared your tips on how to best deal with a Google update hit. Thank you. Most welcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so again, last week we asked you how do you deal with Google Update, how do, you deal, how do you deal with getting hit. A lot of great tips from across the social media universe, some anonymous tips on the survey form, um, which again is available to you. Let's point out one from Tim O'Keefe on Twitter. It's um, T-I-M-O-K-E-E-F-E, -E -E. Tim O'Keefe on Twitter. He said, quote, follow fundamentals. If you get hammered, then adjust. Sometimes might be time for a new URL and IP. It's a good point, right? Stick to fundamentals, track yourself wisely. I guess there are times where you would have to, I guess, go with a new URL. That would, I, I, I saw, okay, the reason I'm bringing this up is I saw a few, saw a few people recommend this sort of action. I, there are going to be times that, yes, that makes sense, but I would be very, very cautious because about advising you to do so. There's a ton of literature on, on, all the various different news websites about this topic. I would suggest you go research it, see what Google has said about this in the past before you do anything drastic. This is Morty taking responsibility of some of the comments that have been out there and telling you that's true, that there might be a time and place for that, but be cautious. Okay, I'm done. Onwards. Um, to infinity and beyond, we're moving on. By the way, did you know that Toy Story 4 is coming out? I do now, but more importantly, there's a Frozen 2 coming. I, I never grew up with it's beyond my like okay my kids are not interested in frozen i have boys and that like, wasn't their thing like one of them liked it we was okay like you could live with it live without it no it's the best movie in the world a toy story is the best movie in the world oh. no that's ridiculous okay it doesn't make it so i mean you'll fine watch toy story 2 I'll we'll watch, watch it two. no i'm gonna watch toy story 4 because it's older there's they're up to four already mm, okay like it, when i was like Already an older kid. I've came seen out. the first three. They're amazing. Come on. All right. Really onwards. SEO and all around digital marketing expert Lucas Lesney spoke with us about the health of all things organic, organic search, organic brand building, organic search media, organic apples. Okay, not organic apples. That was a lame joke. Here it is. Cut one. You are listening to another In Search SEO podcast interview. Joining us today. Well, what can I say? What can't I say? Um, actually, from China to England. He is an international keynote speaker par excellence with 15 years experience as an independent SEO and digital marketing consultant. He is a world-renowned Lukash Zelezny and he is here to talk about the health of all things organic on the web. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, what an energized introduction. Never yeah. had something like that. <laughs> I, I try. I try. It's early in the morning. I got to get pepped up. So before wow. we get going with, with everything, you travel all over the world. You speak at all sorts of conferences and all sorts of events. And the one common thing I see is the vest. You always That's wear true. a vest. No, no vest, no fun. No you know, vest, no fun. <laughs> I have, this is my trademark. I even bought in India, where I am right now, the, this Nehru jacket. Uh, I'm, I just need to see how it will go with my blazer. But... Waist uh, waistcoat is like a must. Oh, it it's it stands out and it's and it's awesome. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, let's dive into the health of all things organic. Let's kick it off with organic search. So let me just ask you directly: Is organic search dying? Obviously, it's not dead, but in your opinion, with Google increasingly targeting users with all sorts of special SERP features and all sorts of filters within the SERP features, um, where do things stand with organic search? I think it, it, I would rather say uh, rather that Google is dying trying to push people into these things. 
search is absolutely fine. You know, SEO is like Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones always saying that this is the last concert and there will be another five and they will be also last. So this year is the last year of SEO and there will be another five <laughs> and they are also the last one, you know? I think, I think we need to understand one fundamental thing. As long as people will be searching the way they do, you know, the, the, the concept of search and the concept of search is way, way longer exist way, way longer than internet and so on. People were searching way, well before that in the phone books and, you know, and even before and so on and so on. Then the organic search is absolutely safe. If Google will start to be too pushy with all that stuff around, people just starting to uh, fly away to other search engines, which is a natural process and it's already happening. And you think it's already happening? Of course, of course. Otherwise, DuckDuckGo wouldn't be uh, growing that fast. And um, even Bing that, uh, you know, some people may laugh right now. I don't consider Bing that bad. I think they are they are doing good, good stuff. And I would always recommend people to use Bing Webmaster Tool. It's a, yet another free tool which can give you a chunk of very quality, high quality data. Yeah, for sure. And DuckDuckGo over the last two, three months, for sure, just it's been all over the news, all sorts of data coming out that their search numbers are jumping up. In the meantime, though, what can search marketers do in order to stay afloat with Google using so many search features? Well, I think there is lots of opportunities still. And um, one of these opportunities uh, for featured snippets. So not this typical snippets we know that we can encode. And then if Google likes this code or likes the website, then we'll accept the stars and breadcrumbs and uh, I don't know, product list and so on. I'm talking about featured snippet that Google purely on own judgment uh, is deciding to show or not to show. I'm a big fan and I remember when I was uh, working in Newswitch, when I noticed that, uh, I was thinking uh, how I can get this on scale and I started hiring uh, someone who will be doing only this and so on and so on and so on. Then we realized that there is one competitor in a very competitive market, UK price comparison website, that started also proactively trying to place uh, their websites, um, their pages uh, into the featured snippet. So this is just one example. And I think there is more and more examples that I've never been that busy. You know, you cannot imagine. I've never been that busy. I have lots of uh, inquiries where I just need to say no because, um, you know, amount of work, amount of resources that is needed in some cases is, is not worth. I'm saying like go for Facebook advertising, go for go for PPC. But on the other side, you know, I'm working with uh, sometimes a very small but very very niche oriented business, and that works so well. And these people are so excited. You know? Do you think though to harp back on feature snippets for a moment? So I have this theory, and you can tell me if I'm right, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I'm not, I won't be offended that going forward, say a year from now, two years from now, whatever it is, that feature snippets won't be the big win that we think they are now. Because it seems that, and we've seen this before, that Google has started using headings, like direct answer headings that seem to mirror direct answers within the feature snippet. That as time goes on, that large snippet of content that we get will become smaller and smaller. And then what you'll get instead are smaller, shorter snippets that more directly answer. They still come from a website, or there's still a URL there, but they're much smaller snippets. They're much more aligned to the actual query. There's, and then there's no need for a user to, co you know, to go on and click that URL. Do you see that happening? Is that not going to happen? What are your thoughts? I think it's an element of bigger problem. It's a usage of uh, third party content, often without the consent in the as a part of search. And uh, I recently been reading that uh, lots of um, people raise these concerns, especially let's step back from feature snippet, the whole concept of AMPs, you know, that you're technically serving content from cache from Google cache. And there is no more like your server can be down and your website is achievable because it's been completely copied as a as a as a as a snapshot to to Google Google infrastructure. So I think um, we will see featured snippet. If they will disappear, there will be something new. Um, we may not know yet, but uh, you see, if you will go back in your memory into two thousand and nine. 
and you will compare what you was uh, looking at th those days. And I know that there was no, I mean, many things didn't exist and they exist right now. But fundamentally, was this really that different? Right. I think it didn't change that much. Right. Yeah, I only ask because now it seems that there be able, there's, um, I know Cindy Crumb is a theory about fraggles, where they're able to pull out and jump you down and pull out, instead of you looking at an actual piece of larger content, they're able to pull out smaller snippets of content. They're able to jump down to a page like they are. I don't remember if you saw uh, about a month ago, there was a, um, a test where Google for AMP URLs in the feature snippet, you jump to the, the page and it scrolls you down to the actual snippet of content on the on the page. It seems that they're trying to advance a little bit, but yeah, you're probably right. And it, feature snippets are probably around here for a long, a long time. Let me jump to, to brand for a second. Yeah. So brand reputation, brand authority, it's more important than ever just as, um, it's not a cliche. I mean, it is a cliche, but I don't mean it as a cliche. With Google focusing more on entities, so the brand's authoritativeness, the brand's authority um, becomes more and more into focus. That said, can a brand build awareness and authority organically these days, or can it not do so? I think uh, brand is very important. And uh, my short answer is absolutely yes. Um, I wouldn't... Uh, come to any customer and say like, you know what, brand keywords, this is not my cup of tea. I will be only pushing you on generic and pushing traffic on generic. Uh, Google My Business is an absolutely fantastic uh, tool. And this is part of the strategy I'm using uh, every day. I'm also using uh, brand trackers. My name and surname is quite, you know, I'm always saying like, when you have a Polish name, check surname and you're living in London, what could go wrong? You know, everyone, <laughs> Everyone is like misspelling this, you know, but this is a blessing when you realize that, first of all, there is not many people uh, named like that. And second, there are brand trackers. So I'm using these brand trackers and I'm tracking where are mentions and I'm also suggesting this to customers and we're using this as a part of our linking strategy. So we're trying to pivot a bit um, the, the whole, whole concept of brand and brand awareness into our little SEO world. But I would never say that brand is not important and so on and so on. Right. On that note, do you think that it's getting harder for brands to build organic relationships with other influencers, with other people out in the industry? Is there a greater focus on creating paid connections? And does that mean that the grassroots connections that brands used to make are sort of fading away? I think uh, it's very gray area because we still need to remember about Google TOS. And uh, terms uh, of service are saying clearly that, you know, what you can, what you cannot, pretty much you cannot do anything <laughs> these days. Everything is like um, considered to be uh, like, you know, manipulative tactics. Right. But, um, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm saying about this because you mentioned uh, money, money element. So every time there is a money element, it's very, very risky situation that uh, there can be like, and by the way, can you link to us? We're not paying for that link. We're paying for something else, but link is blah, blah, blah. You know, we win in this world. Uh, so, so, so yeah, I think, I think, you know, I'm always will be tra trying to pivot um, brand and everything what is going around brand into my little world. But sometimes I still will be a big fan of exact match domain. And I need to tell you that I recently, um, well, that was two years ago, I acquired SEO, SEO London uh, domain, uh, the new extension London that Sadiq Khan introduced. I also have socialmedia.pl, uh, which I'm quite proud of. And I can see that it's not really how the theory book is saying that that doesn't make any difference anymore and so on and so on and so on. Frankly speaking, you know, I feel like uh, having a domain like cheapholidays.com or, uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, SEO.com, there is a company which has this, or even like uh, my, my good friend, Philly Wiese, he's uh, very good in uh, having this online dot marketing. I think it's very easy to remember, and then you can forget for a moment about all these rules and articles he was reading for last 10 years, exact match domains doesn't work, doesn't rank that well anymore, and so on and so on. Okay. We're not talking about this at the moment. We're talking, is this easy to remember or no? Right. I think SEO.London is easy, but from the other side, some people may be a little confused about what do you mean .London? Because it's not .London.com, you mean, or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, but it's still there is still lots of potential and value.
Yeah, it's interesting. Like something like say cheaphotels.com. I always thought forget a, forget the ranking factor, not a ranking factor using the exact match domain. But I think users feel if you're the you're the domain cheaphotels.com, then you're the authority in all things cheaphotels.com. It sort of builds that brand association and brand authority that we're talking about. Let's hop over to social media then, since you brought it up. Organic presence on Facebook is pretty much dead, right? Um, that aside, Facebook aside, more reliable platforms such as Twitter are become increasingly harder to accumulate momentum, being that there's such a flow of content out there. And of course, that flow of content manifests itself and expresses itself on Twitter where it's being shared. How could a marketer stay on float on a platform like Twitter, living in an environment where there's just so much content out there? Let me be a very cheeky right now. Uh, marketers can survive on Twitter moving to LinkedIn, <laughs> period. You know, like I, I afraid that if we would, if you would invite me in 10 years uh, from now, then uh, there will be no Twitter. I don't know that I, for me, this concept is dying and so on. So Facebook, I have a massive problem with how easy is this uh, level of getting into advertising and start bombarding me with this super low quality uh, adverts. And I need to express this because every time I'm thinking of this, I'm, I'm inside, I'm boiling. You know, everybody's saying like, hey, I will tell you how to do seven figures. Oh, you only need to sign to my um, to my automated webinar. And I'm like, yet another automated webinar. That's probably 103rd today. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then, you know, and, and then you, you, because they're targeting me because I'm, I'm matching uh, the, the requirements or like the, the profile, you know, the amount of pages uh, I like. By the way, there is no intent on Facebook. Mm. All these adverts uh, were posted on Messenger, seriously. You know, so that is my main problem with Facebook. I, I'm okay with Instagram, but then I'm going into LinkedIn and I uh, have my peace of mind. Okay. You know, I, I have there my, my leads, I'm meeting some people, I have a professional conversation. I know that sometimes people are there and getting to me with, hey, I have a, I'm selling blog posts, blah, 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 blah. Ignore it. That's the downside. Yeah. But I love LinkedIn and it's, it's a phenomenal platform. And you know, they, um, child, like if you really want to have a fun on LinkedIn, you should, um, upgrade your account. And I think this is the best 20 pounds I spend every month. It's only four pints. And you know, I don't, I don't care to have like, four pints sacrifice for one <laughs> LinkedIn account. By tell the way, them, tell them that I said that. It, tell them it, it, guys. It's all here. It's all being recorded. It's all here. By the way, yeah. I, I'm with you. I hate Facebook. I, I barely check it. Ironically, the only thing I ever do is with Facebook, if, I want, if I'm researching a product. So what I'll do is I'll keep clicking on the ads and it'll bombard me with the ads, which I yeah. want to see for now and then I don't visit for another month. I really can't stand Facebook. How do you leverage LinkedIn, by the way, content-wise? What um, do you find works? I think... This is another thing that makes me super excited, man. When um, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be quite open. There is, you know, like um, not only posts about my SEO things and so on and so on. And by the way, I am targeting uh, rather business owners, and they are really not that keen to read about that. You know, how to crawl website and so on. And so on. That's something that we can talk between me and you and so on and so on. Business, business owner want to have a solution, yeah? Right. So I'm rather sh sharing something like, oh, take a look, uh, yet another website I optimized for 100 person in SEM Rush. Would you like to talk about this and so on and so on? But I will tell you like, when I become a British citizen uh, in November, 2017, which I was very proud of, I posted photo on my Facebook and photo on my LinkedIn. Obviously on LinkedIn, I got 25,000 friends, followers, whatever we want to call this. And you know, like, the amount of response, engagement, comments, and everything was like overwhelming. And I'm not saying like it was only nice, but it was also like kind of encouraging that this platform is so alive, you know? Yeah, it's funny. I started doing a video series. I don't, I, I retweeted out on Twitter, but I created for LinkedIn. And I find it does, mu yeah. it does much better on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Yeah. And video, like you said, video is um, it's a great uh, medium right now on LinkedIn. Also, the fact that they are monetizing on pro accounts from one way and can make cost per click relatively high to uh, filter out 
everyone who have a you know 10 pounds budget and will be talking to me like stop doing marketing until you will not read that then then i'm like like i'm very very grateful you know because i feel like you know at the end of the day they can be a google of social media uh you know so they will dominate they will absolutely dominate because people at the end of the day want to do things in purpose okay everything uh right now have a very short life lifespan yeah uh, snapchat uh, would i was like such a boom and now no one is talking about this you know even kids right now here in india there is a boom on TikTok. You know, I'm writing article, but yeah, I was like, well, this is like <laughs> music. Uh, we are, we are a bit too old for this, you know, Pro- probably like you're, you're 15 dating years me. old. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, like I bet, I bet next year I will come here and there will be no one talking about TikTok anymore, right. you know, and LinkedIn is growing and growing. And I had a couple of slides and again, I will par- paraphrase this because I don't remember. I think uh, the moment when I was doing slides was a couple of months ago, there was 600 million accounts and LinkedIn estimated that there is 3 billion professionally active people and professionally active people that probably include even like a fisherman's or rickshaw drivers or Uber drivers somewhere in the middle of nowhere in India. And they kind of want everyone to have LinkedIn account. You may say like why they would like to have that's important. That's mm. definitely important. Your career is what gives uh, bread and butter to your family, and definitely, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, I can I can go on and on and on about my frustrations with Twitter lately, and my my liking towards LinkedIn, which is I I wouldn't if you would have asked me two years ago, I never would have said yeah, LinkedIn is much easier for me than than Twitter has become. Okay. Listen, before we go, I have to do this to you. I have to ask you. I have a little bit I call optimize it or disavow it. I'm going to give you two options. Okay. Either there are really two good options and you have to choose one of these two great options and, of course, put one aside. Or I'll give you two really bad options and you have to choose one really bad option. Um, in this case, we're going to play Optimize It or Disavow, disavow It. <laughs> going to ask you, if you had to choose one over the other one. You can only do one. You can only focus on one. It's a zero-sum world. Organic, SEO, or PPC? Which Organic one do you go with? SEO. Organic SEO. Yeah. He's looking at me like, what are you asking me for rolling his eyes at me? Come on. <laughs> yeah. I, would, okay, but... I would be bored. Like after three days, I would die probably with PPC. <laughs> Uh, you know the PPC guy saying the opposite. Oh, SEO. I would die with, with SEO. Give me PPC. But where, why do you think that PPC is not the way to go? Because there's so much talk about PPC, PPC, PPC. And I agree with you. I don't I don't buy into it. I will tell you why. I was thinking about this for a long time. And we had a long discussion with my other friends uh, many years ago. I think this is 10 years from now. And we found probably the reason why SEO is so exciting and PPC is not. Because SEO never been fully transparent. SEO never been given you like a handbook. It's not like you will call Google and say like, you know what, can you take a look at my account? Oh yeah, here is a bunch of other keywords. You just need to increase a little your budget. You know, it's kind of like an RPG game. It's kind of like a journey. It's kind of like a marathon. It, and obviously if you like pivots in Excel like me, if you like VLOOKUPs, then, you know, I when I started working for myself, I just realized first time after 17 years, how it is to do something, first of all, because you like, and then because of the, because the fact that it's giving you money, bread and butter, and help and make you to, to support your family and so mm-hmm. on and so on. And don't make me wrong, I was really enjoying my full-time jobs. It was an absolutely fantastic journey. I had a great team of uh, lots of talented people, but right now it's this moment of, uh, Reconsidera- reconsideration request, you know? <laughs> I, re- I reconsider, <laughs> yeah, really cheap fun, but I couldn't uh, resist. It's okay, we, we accept you know? those here, we accept them. Yeah, and, and you know, and it, it's it's like, oh my God, like, frankly speaking, like I was not sleeping today uh, because Monday is my busy day and I'm always sending reports to my customers. But I was like, oh my gosh, I am very lucky because I'm in the right place in the right time, you know? And I wish everybody to be in the right place in the right time with the right skills, you know. Wow. Well, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to join us. Again, Lucas Zelezny, a great marketer, a great speaker. Check him out. Of course, we will link to all of his 
content insight in our blog post that harbors this podcast. Again, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me and lots of love to everyone who was listening to us. And we are back to your regularly scheduled in search SEO podcast. Uh, I was a bit surprised, by the way, at his hardline stance on Google's use of SERP features. Really interesting, by the way, really, really, really nice guy. I know I say that a lot, but it's really, really important for a good interview that there just be a good flow, that the person be nice. And he was great. I really enjoyed that one. Good. Yeah, thank you. Nice conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, just so you know, you heard some of my favorite things about LinkedIn on this, pa- in, on, in this past interview. Next week, we have a LinkedIn expert joining us, and you'll hear some of my not-so-favorite things about LinkedIn, i.e. it's a bit of a cold space. Uh, of course, we talk LinkedIn from an SEO perspective because that's what we do here on the In Search SEO podcast, but enough of that for now because that's next week's episode. You have to tune in for next week. Right now, I'm craving some good old SEO news. Kim, please hit it with the news. Okay, right on time. Let's see. Google has made it possible to use the AMP and mobile-friendly test tools to see how changes to the code will impact the page, meaning you can make a change to the code without the tool and see what the effects will be. Yeah, that sounds cool. Great. Simple. Easy. Great. (laughs) Okay. The info command that lets you see the canonical URLs for a URL is going away. Instead, you will have to use the URL inspection tool. This means to see a URL's canonical URL, you will have to have verified access to it via Search Console. Yeah, so Google said this because people are not using the info command so often. I don't know. It doesn't sound right to me, but I guess I'll take them at their word for it. But there's a good chance there's another reason behind this. Okay, onwards. Google has added a feature that lets you see vacation rentals when looking for a hotel. The feature can be seen on mobile and is soon heading to desktop as well. So that's an interesting move. By the way, um, it makes a lot of sense to do this because why not offer those vacation rentals? Because there's, you know Airbnb is so popular. This is not yeah. entirely new. Google was testing this for a while, um, and it been, may, may or may not have been more frequent depending upon the market that you were in, but now it's officially here, and again, it's coming to desktop. It might already be there by the time you hear this podcast, so check it out. Yeah, maybe. Yep. Okay, last item. Last item is Google will be getting some more consistent conversion data. As of May 1st, Google Ads will offer cross-conversion to all attribution reports. Also, Google Ads Editor has replaced AdWords Editor. Well, that's about time since AdWords has been gone for a while and that Google Ads has been around for a while. But okay, great. Thank you very much for the news, Kim. You're most welcome, Morty. I hope you will please do it again next week. It's very likely. <laughs> okay. Well, with the news being done and our time drawing near, you know what time it is again. It's time for our fun SEO send-off question. <laughs> Okay, did you know that baseball season just started? I did not, but is that an official sign that spring is arriving? No, it's an official sign on my house that there's going to be a war because one of my kids is a Yankee fan, one of my kids is a Met fan. And which game are we going to watch? No, it's a Mets game, whatever, it's a whole thing. Okay, so uh, baseball for me, I love baseball. It's just something so nostalgic, I cannot explain it. I was watching some highlights this morning. Okay, I cannot explain the feeling of just watching baseball. I know it seems like really boring. Yes. It's so good. Yes, it is. No, it's so good. Uh, Okay. Either way, we're not talking about baseball. You may not like baseball. You may not know what baseball even is. I know what it is. Okay. That's uh, right. as far as I'll take it. Fine. (laughs) What's your favorite team? I I don't know. (laughs) I don't have one favorite team. No. What's a team? I know what a team is also. No, no, I know what no, and like I know you know what a team means. I mean, can you give me an example of a team? Um, what you just said, Jets. Jets. <laughs> Nets. Good, close enough. Anyway, okay. for those of you who are not baseball inclined, and I don't blame you, I I totally get it. It's a weird thing. I just love baseball. Anyway, um, today we're gonna ask, what sport does Google love more than any other? Please take it away, Kim. So I'm going to go with soccer because it's very popular, international, and Google goes with the flow. Oh, that's cool. You? Soccer. You mean football. I don't know what soccer is. Soccer. Oh, football. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Not <laughs> football. On. Soccer. Okay. No, I mean like you know, what everyone else Not calls American football. Not American. Football. I mean, football. It's called football. Everyone else besides Americans call it football, right? 
So I guess I spent some time in America. So yeah, well. I call it soccer. Oh, I get it. Okay. So there's no confusion when someone says soccer. There could right, be you can't say that here. You have football. to say soccer. No one know what you're talking about if you said yes. football here. They think, no, they would. They would think you're talking about American football. Right. Makes sense. Okay. okay. I'm going to go with curling. Curling. Yeah, curling. I think Google loves curling. Um, it's unassuming in many ways. It's full of grace and hidden glory. Much the way Google is all full of, of hidden secrets. Like, curling is full of hidden stuff because no one knows about it. <laughs> okay. I know about curling. Well, Maybe you're from Sweden. baseball, yes. That's like your official sport, no? Curling? Hockey is uh, Hockey? a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. Henrik Lundqvist, the goalie for the Rangers from Sweden. Yeah? Yeah. No, there are a lot of good hockey players. Yeah, there are a lot of hockey from Sweden. So it's like yes. curling like the Swedish version of shuffleboard. You know, do you know what shuffleboard is? No. It's like a, the elderly played. My grandmother had polio <laughs> played shuffleboard. You have to slide so no, these discs. It's not so good for elderly people like that to maybe walk on the ice. You can obviously... I thought everywhere in Sweden was ice. No. No. My, my stereotypical understanding is wrong? <laughs> I would say so. But it's, it's bonkers. <laughs> Wake up, Morty. I'm trying to. <laughs> Smell the roses. Wait, wait, wait. So you, have you played curling? We have to talk about this. Um, almost. Do you call it playing curling? Or you just call it curling? I think playing curling. Playing curling. We went to this um, children's science museum, and they had a sports section where you could try out things like this, but it's on plastic. Right. That's and curling. That's the closest thing I've ever That's cool, though. done. Real ice? No. Huh. Ice fishing? You ever done that? No. They just call it fishing. But we drive uh, cars on the ice. You drive winter. cars on the ice in mm -hmm. the winter? It's easier to transport furniture on the, uh, to the islands on, on ice. You're on being car. for real? Yeah. Car, ice, transport. And that'll do it for the In Search SEO podcast for this week. Tune in again next Tuesday for an all new episode of the In Search SEO podcast. I'll just say In Search SEO podcast one more time because it's In Search because you're all in search of something. <laughs>